shit is about to get real. Howdy folks, uh, I'm going to be trying to kill two birds with one video here today. Uh, I've been getting more and more questions lately since people have found out that I've gone to uh, the FR Sky, the Horus, and OpenTX. I've been getting more questions about how I deal with internal combustion engine setups. Uh, my throttle output setups for internal combustion. Lots of info out there on electric, not so much on um, internal combustion for OpenTX. I'm just going to be showing you my simple method and then the second part of the video is to show you how it works um, I'm going to be showing you on the turbine because that's the only internal combustion engine I've got programmed to this however it would be very similar you can use the same ideas that I'm using for this for nitro or gas and uh, I'll just show you how it works with with the machine doing a startup and the reason I have to do that which leads into the second part of the video is I have to change the gearbox oil in this thing and to do that I want the gearbox um, I want it nice and hot so I've got to you know hover it around in the yard here for a bit I won't video that but uh, after I get it up to temperature you know we'll bring the machine into the house or into the garage here anyone who wants to stick around for the second half of the video then can see how I change the gearbox oil what's involved in that um, not really exciting but Curious, right? For anyone who's not too familiar how internal engine uh, throttle um, setups or outputs differ from electric, not too much. You know, you've still got your throttle stick that controls your speed of your engine. But, uh, you know, what we used to do with our other radios, you know, here's my old uh, JRX9503, which has digital trims for aileron, elevator, and rudder, but you'll notice it has an analog trim for throttle. Now, why is that? That was for, this, this is for specifically internal combustion engine control at low stick. This would control our throttle body position on the carburetor. And the general uh, way most people did this is, you know, you'd have your trim right, you know, in, in the low position to turn the power off. This would close the throttle body right up, so no more air would be getting to the engine, and that would kill the engine if it was running. And you'd also have it in this position with the throttle body right closed, so you could prime the engine. You know, with the with the carburetor right shut off, when you spin the prop over or engage the electric start on your heli, uh, it would, um, you know, it would suck fuel into the engine, so you could start it. And then what we would do is to start it, we'd put it, you know, somewhere in the higher position for a, for a cold start. You're, you know, you're opening the throttle body up a bit more, um, get, it, uh, get it started. As the engine warms up, it would speed up, so then you would dial your throttle, uh, analog throttle trim down to where you'd be at a nice um, sustained idle, somewhere in the mid position. So that's how we used to do it, but now, of course, we've got digital trims all over trim and center. using a digital trim for th throttle body control not the best it's just it takes a long time you know you have to hold it it's not quick so there's better ways to do it especially with OpenTX now again this is my method there's you know with OpenTX you can achieve the same results by using many different methods generally so what I do on this, this is just going to be the turbine example, but how I deal with the various outputs for th throttle is to use throttle curves. Now, for all heli flyers, you're probably going to be familiar with the first four that I've got programmed here. I've got normal, um, idle up one, idle up two, and throttle hold, and then uh, a couple of extras that uh, are different. And again, you could do the same idea with nitro or um, gas and again this would be for airplanes as well you know you wouldn't have all the idle ups and everything you might have three different throttle curves you might have your your normal stick curve and then you might have a toggle assigned to your carburetor closed carburetor mid and carburetor for start for cold start and you can do that all that with throttle curves very very typical normal throttle curve zero 
you know, I'd be at, rotors wouldn't be spooled at low stick. As soon as I come off uh, low stick, power is ramped up quickly to, uh, you know, to get the rotor speed up. And then it's fairly consistent to keep the rotor RPM constant. And then idle up one, you know, you'd have power throughout your entire collective range. Idle up two, same idea, just a little more power output. Throttle hold, you'd be right down at idle. Um, so the rotors wouldn't be spooled or your ESC would be basically turned off. Your motor would be turned off. And then the other ones that I've got on here is a stop curve. Absolute 0% output. That tells the turbine's FADEC to shut down the fuel pump to turn the engine off for gas or, um, elect or nitro. That would close your throttle body right off. And the one different one here would be my start curve, uh, which is 100% output. And I've got that assigned to my momentary toggle here. And that's what puts the FADEC into the start sequence. And uh, the hold, by the way, that's on my hold. And my stop is on this little toggle here. So I've got it stopped. Just a warning. Ignition on. And then in the on position, when it's in there, uh, it reverts to the normal throttle curve. So then I've got normal uh, control in, in the start sequence. And the only other thing to uh, mention on this is the multiplexing. Let's just go into our mix. So this is really neat. This is how you, and this will be um, applicable even to electric powered heli flyers. Whatever sequence you put these in, if you use multiplexing with replace, the last one in the line will override everything else. So if we do, went into hold here, just as an example, we'll go into the edit screen. You notice down here at multiplex, I've got replace. We've got three options, multiply and add. But if you have replace in there, what it's going to do is no matter whatever, you know, no matter where the throttle stick is, if you're in idle, idle up one, up one. Uh, you know, and you're powered up, as soon as you hit that throttle hold, hold. You know, you'll raise. see the throttle hold. you'll see the throttle channel, you know, go right down, and because because this is the last one in the sequence, and I've got replace, it replaces anything that's selected above it. So hold will override everything, and that's exactly what you want. Um, so that's just another little tip when you set up your mixer for your different. Uh, throttle curves or however, you know, whatever you're doing, uh, use that replace and it will replace whatever's before it. It's, it's pretty cool. Showing all that now, so we'll get the machine out. Uh, I've got to fuel it up and uh, I'll show you how this works. And then the second part will just drain out the oil and replace it. Okay, so now hopefully starts getting fun. I'm going to try to hold the uh, radio here in frame with the helicopter kind of off to the side so what I basically I just want to uh, watch that uh, throttle output this bar graph here uh, when I hit right now you'll see it's at zero percent so the FADEC is in the off position turbine is not going to run I'm going to turn this toggle into the arm position jet turbine ignition on and you'll see the throttle output has crept up to 13% now. So the FADEC knows it's in the run position. When I hit the start toggle back here, you'll see this jump to 100% as long as I hold that on. And that's what turns or tells the FADEC to uh, turn on the turbine. And again, this would be the same if, if you had a nitro or a gas, you know, maybe select a three position toggle. One would be carburetor closed, mid carburetor um, you know, at your normal idle position and that high carburetor fast idle. You know, if you wanted more control, you could assign it to your sixth position knob even. That, it, that would give you more control. So many ways to, uh, to do this. But anyways, let's hit the start and hope it works. Shit is about to get real. So it's going through its normal start sequence now. Coming up to 
now I basically got control through my throttle stick in my normal flight mode throttle curve. So I'll just let it warm up for a bit. And this up slightly. Again, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. We'll just take it off. But again, I've got to run this thing for a good five minutes to get that uh, gearbox oil up. And then we'll bring it into the garage and drain her out. Okay, so we've had, been flying it for, covering around for about, I don't know, six minutes or so, and uh, landed it. Everything's good and hot, um, so we'll just, again, we'll hit that switch to turn off the FADEC. Again, this would be the same if you had it set up to close your throttle body on a uh, nitro or gas engine. Jet turbine ignition off. And FADEC has turned off the fuel pump and it will just go through its cool down sequence now. But uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can set up OpenTX, a really simple method using throttle curves and use the multiplex replace function to override the curves before the one, uh, you know, your most important one, which is generally your hold at the... Uh, in your order of sequence. So, I'm going to let this thing cool off a little bit, but we'll start draining the oil uh, right away here. Okay, so we're in the garage, just got the machine up on the bench. Um, I'm going to put this on a tripod right away, I just want to show you. So I've got a little plate out here, that's what the oil is going to drain into. And there's the gearbox uh, drain plug right up here. This is basically a, uh, it's just a little grub screw with a lock nut around it. So you've got to, when you take that lock nut out, the whole thing might come out or not. There's not tons of oil in there, but uh, you'll kind of get an idea when we drain it. I'm just going to throw this on the tripod. So, let's get that lock nut off. The whole thing might come out. Don't know. Nope. And there's the little grub screw still in there. So, get it out. It's actually a pretty big grub screw. Now we will, I'm just going to tilt this down to the plate, then we will push this down and see what comes out. And there we go. Um, it'll, it'll keep draining out. It's a very small hole, so uh, it's going to take a while to come out. Hopefully more comes out. Okay, so this has been draining for about 10 minutes or so. Nothing else seems to be coming out. Um, well, that's about what we got. So, yeah. It's not so much your, you have to do this, I find, uh, because the oil gets dirty. I do this once every season, once every flying season. And uh, it, the thing is, the gear oil seems to disappear. So it's obviously, some of it's being burnt in, uh, in the second stage probably, well, it's probably, who knows where it's going, but uh, my guess is there's no vent on that gearbox, so when it builds up in heat, there's pressure in there, so the fluid, some of it will probably go by a seal into the second stage. It's probably a good time to check the hose for the second stage rear bearing. This is just the lubrication hose, you know, make sure it's in good shape. This is this is a Ren MW54H, so not something that Ren makes anymore. I don't think their new two stages even have the uh, have the um, lubrication tube. Everything's done internally. So all all you all I use for the gear oil is just standard, you know, gear oil that you can buy off the shelf. This is uh, what 7590. It's a synthetic. Probably don't have to use synthetic. And I, ins I put it in through with a syringe. 
and it takes, when you completely drain it out, it's about 15 cc's. So I'm just going to fill this up. Doesn't have to be totally precise. Oh, where's the plunger? Get my big hand out of the way. Oh, this is this is not exactly easy. The camera in the way. Okay, there we go. Oh, good mess. Okay, so all I've done on the end of the syringe, I've just got some silicone fuel tubing. And I use this just for um, for this purpose, uh, doing the gearbox oil in this thing. Then I've just got a piece of 3 millimeter air tubing pipe. And we'll put in the hole and fill it up. I'll go fairly slow or it'll start pouring out before it seeps down into the side. I've got this thing at quite an angle. There we go. And I'll just clean that clean that off a little bit. Now the uh the grub screw, or the drain plug screw, if you want to call it that. I'm just going to put a little gray RTV silicone around the threads. Um, so I'm just going to pause that while I put that on. Okay, so we've got the uh, grub screw, the RTV on it. And put it in. Don't screw it in all the way because you, uh, you need that lock nut on the outside. Get that on. I want that in. get that out a little bit. You want the grub screw roughly level with the base of the lock nut. Right. We'll just tighten the lock nut. And that's it. That's all there is involved in the oil change. And again, I do that about uh, well, I do it once a season. I guess if you flew a lot, um, yeah, you might want to do it more, but it's important. Uh, just keeps everything in that gearbox healthy, and that's all there is to it. Not really applicable to anything out there right now except the MW54H, but uh, if you're curious, it might be interesting. Cheers, folks. Have a good one.